Hello everyone, my name is Lynette Lee and I am a certified professional resume writer and a career specialist here at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Career Center. Today we're going to be talking all about resumes. To begin with, the first most important thing that I want people to understand is that a resume does not serve the purpose that many of us think it does. A lot of people say, you need a resume to get you a job. But that's not quite true. A resume is not what gets you the job. A resume is simply to get you to an interview. Once you reach the interview stage, your resume's done its work. This is an important distinction because it helps you understand that the resume does not need to be the end-all be-all of what you put forth as a job seeker. It's not a detailed biography. It's more like a sales pitch. We encourage people to think about it as a teaser trailer at the movies. You don't want to give away the entire plot. You just want to tell them enough to let them know that they want to see more. This is a really important distinction because the number one mistake we see people make with resumes is including too much information. Too much irrelevant information, too much information that we're, they're not going to care about. We want to make sure that you focus your resume on only the things that are really going to attract the hiring manager's attention. Now, before we go any further, I should say there are two big exceptions to this. Your first exception is a federal resume. If you're applying for a job with the federal government, they want to know everything, every detail. So if you're applying for a job with the federal government, we recommend that you get a resume guide specifically tailored for the federal resume. The second big exception is an academic CV. If you're applying for a position um, at a university as a researcher or as a professor, you need a long, detailed academic CV. If that's what you need, this seminar is not the guide for you. But for the rest of us and people in the majority of jobs, we want to keep our resumes short and snappy. I like to say, when in doubt, leave it out. This means anything that you're not sure whether or not it belongs on the resume, you're not sure whether it helps you to include this information or not, it probably doesn't. This is important because hiring managers like so many of us, are very busy. In fact, studies have shown that on average, a hiring manager is only going to look at your resume for about 30 seconds. You only have 30 seconds to make an impression, which you won't be able to do if your resume is a lengthy wall of text. Hiring managers are busy. Make their job easy. Make your resume very concise, short, snappy, and easy for them to read. One thing that you can do to help with this is make sure that you format it properly. You want to have it be fairly short, one to one and a half pages for most people. Now, I have seen resumes for seasoned professionals with 10 plus years of experience and a lot of professional memberships and that sort of thing that stretch to a full two pages, and that's fine. But for most of us, a page to a page and a half should be plenty. And if you have fewer than five years of job experience, one page is an absolute maximum. We also recommend that you have clean formatting, have big, bold section headings for your different sections so that it's very easy for a hiring manager to see at a glance where your education is, where your skills are, where your experience is. Something else to keep in mind is font size. A lot of resume templates that we see online or through Microsoft Word will default to an eight or nine point font size for at least some of the sections. That's just too small. It's too small to read easily, so we recommend at least 10 point font. Honestly, I'm more comfortable with 11 or 12. Finally, for structure, you want to make sure you include lots of bullet points as opposed to paragraphs. Paragraphs are big and bulky, they're intimidating to read. Bullet points, much easier to skim. But the most important thing you want to do to keep your resume short, snappy, and eye-catching is make sure that you only include the most relevant information. Don't include things that are overly detailed. Don't write an entire book about what you do on the job every day. And there's some information you may want to leave out entirely. For example, um, 
if you are a truck driver with a CDL and several years of truck driving experience, but prior to that, you were a certified pharmacy technician. You don't need to include pharmacy technician um, certification on your resume. I know you earned it. I know you worked hard for it. But the people who are looking to hire you as a truck driver just aren't going to care. In fact, sometimes including irrelevant education or experience on a resume can backfire. I talked to one Career Center client recently, a teacher who has a master's degree in education and was looking for a summer job. She wasn't having any luck because people saw the master's degree and assumed she was insanely overqualified for a retail position. We encouraged her to remove the master's degree from her resume just while applying for summer jobs. Again, you have to vary it up. Think about what are the people reading this resume going to care about? That's what you want to focus on. Of course, that's going to depend on what kind of job you're applying for. So you definitely want to keep in mind that you want to tailor your resume to the job. Think of it in terms of one-size-fits-all clothing, which generally looks pretty terrible on most of us, versus a professionally tailored outfit designed to highlight your strengths and cover up your flaws. You want your resume to be that professionally tailored outfit, not a generic one-size-fits-all document. So ask yourself, what will they care about? The people play who are reading this resume, what matters to them? You want to play up the skills and experience that are most relevant to the job you're applying for and play down the rest. If you have a varied work history, if you've worked in a few different kinds of fields, you might just include a very brief description of some of the irrelevant jobs and a more extensive description of the jobs that are more directly relevant to what you want to do next. You don't give everything equal footage because not everything is equally important. Now, if you're the kind of person who is applying for several different kinds of jobs at once, you may in fact need to make at least two entirely different versions of your resume. We recommend this for people who are multi-tracked, as it were. For example, I have two resumes. I have one resume for my main job, which is in the library. It focuses on my several years of experience working with the library. Um, the skills that I include on there are training, leading seminars, the education that I include is a degree in education, and a certified professional resume writer status. That's one version of me. The other version of me, a completely different resume that I use for singing jobs. On there, the education is a degree in music. The job experience includes 15 years as lead alto at the St. Joseph Cathedral Choir. And the skills section includes skills like excellent sight reading, three octave range, etc., etc. So you would think these are two completely separate people, and they kind of are. They're two different versions of me, depending on who I need to be in order to get the job, in order to get the hiring manager's attention. You may need to do the same thing, especially if you're looking at several different careers at once. But even if you're not, even if you're only doing one kind of job, you may still need to change your resume from time to time, depending on the job you're applying for. The big question, of course, is how do you know what's relevant? How do you know what skills they're looking for? If you've been in your field for a while, you probably do know. But if you're moving to a new field, you may have to do some research. Thankfully, East Baton Rouge Parish has one of the best libraries in the South. So research is going to be easy. Here are some things that you can do to help research. You can look for job postings in your field on a website like Indeed, for example. Just look up jobs in your field. Print out 20, 30 of them. Look through them. Read through them. What do they have in common? What do these different jobs have in common? What skills, what keywords keep coming up again? You could check out a website like onet.org, which is a fantastic career information website, to find out more information about what the most important aspects of your job are. 
You can check out industry-specific resume books. We have several of these um, here in the library. Um, in the Career Center, for example, we have books on expert resumes for manufacturing careers, expert resumes for teaching careers, and they have the skill set that's relevant to your specific field. You're going to look through all of these sources and you're going to look for patterns. What keywords, what skills keep coming up? These are the things you want to make sure that you emphasize on your resume. You want to make sure that your resume matches what they're looking for as much as humanly possible. This is especially important in the era of ATS. ATS being Applicant Tracking Software. This basically is when a company has a job position, they will write a computer program. The computer program will scan through all of the resumes and applications that they receive for this job, and it will look for a set of, let's say, 20 keywords. If the resume does not have, for example, 15 of these 20 keywords in it, the resume is never seen by a human being. So you want to make sure that your resume has the keywords and the skills that they're going to be looking for so that you can get past the computer program and get seen by an actual human being. So, we've talked a lot so far about what you don't want to include in your resume. You don't want to include irrelevant information. But let's talk a little bit about what you do want to include. Let's talk about how to write a job description for a job that you've had. A few key things to keep in mind. You want to make sure that you emphasize accomplishments over duties as much as possible. What does that mean? Well, a duty is something that you have to do as part of your job. An accomplishment, on the other hand, is something that you've achieved, something that you've done on the job that you can be proud of. If I were to talk about that as an accomplishment, what I would say would be something like, I have created eight unique career-related seminars, which I've presented inside the library, at a variety of outreach events, and now online. It's more specific, it's more impressive, and it sounds like something that I took pride in doing rather than something that I was forced to do. Wherever possible, you want to talk about accomplishments, the things that you achieved on the job that you're proud of, rather than talking about the things that you just had to do as part of the job. You also want to make sure that you are very specific, especially whenever you can throw in a number, throw in a number. You want to quantify and specify wherever you can. So, for example, I could say, I trained people. Okay. Or I could say that I trained eight Career Center employees and cross-trained 45 reference employees on all Career Center procedures. I threw the numbers in there, I was more specific with what I trained them on, and all of a sudden it sounds more impressive. This is especially important if you're in a field where numbers are a big deal. If you're in a field like sales or insurance, you absolutely need numbers saturating your resume. What percent did you grow the client base? How many dollars was in the budget that you were working with? Get into those details. They're really going to want that information. But even if you're not in a numbers-focused field, you still got some numbers. Go ahead and include those. You want to make sure that you use strong action verbs in the correct tense. When you're describing your job, you want to put yourself in the driver's seat. Action verbs can help you with that. So, for example, you wouldn't say responsibilities included social media management. Social media was a thing that happened. Who knows how it happened? No! Put yourself in the driver's seat. Say, managed social media accounts and then be as specific and quantify. Manage social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress website uh, with thrice weekly updates. Be very specific. When I say in the correct tense, when I talk about action verbs, when I talk about using strong action verbs in the correct tense, what I mean is you want to use the present tense for the job that you currently are holding, and past tense for all previous jobs. 
So in my current job, I train, I manage, I present. In my previous job, I trained, managed, presented. Past tense, because I'm not doing it there anymore. There are certain things you want to make absolutely sure that you include when you're talking about your job description. You want to definitely highlight software and equipment that you used. Please do not put on your resume that you used a computer. That's not helpful information. Put that you created spreadsheets in Microsoft Excel. Tell them exactly what software you used and exactly what you used it for. If you work with equipment, don't say you operated heavy equipment. Which equipment? Forklift? Pallet jack? Backhoe? They want to know these keywords. The ATS software is looking for these keywords. You also want to make sure you highlight any time you did something noteworthy, anything that you can um, brag about. If you earned an award at work, if you were promoted, if you were um, employee of the month, if you were put into a position of more responsibility, these are things you want to make sure you highlight in your job description. I recommend making a big list of all of the things that you can talk about having achieved at your job before you sit down to write your resume. Let's talk about a few more last-minute tips. First, let's talk about some red flags that could seriously derail your chances. First, typos. This is something that's automatically going to get your resume thrown in the trash can. If you have typos on your resume, it makes you look careless. It makes it look like you didn't put forth the effort to really create a professional looking document. Now when I say typos, please understand I mean more by that than you might think. Yes, I mean misspelled words, bad grammar, bad uh, capitalization, all of this stuff you want to avoid. But also, you want to avoid inconsistent formatting. For example, in your work history, if one of your jobs lists the months and years that you worked there, but the next job only lists the years, that's an inconsistency. They're going to frown on that. If for one job you include the city and the state, but the next job you only include the state, that's an inconsistency. If your section headings don't match, if you change fonts midway through, if your section heading for professional experience is bolded and capitalized, but your section heading for education is not bolded. These are inconsistencies that are going to make it look like your document wasn't carefully written. Please be aware of this. Please be careful of this. And because it's very difficult for us to see the mistakes that we've made on a document, please get your resume proofread by someone else. In fact, we usually recommend that you get it proofread by three people. So that way, all the mistakes are caught, guaranteed. The next big flag, not such an easy fix. This is an unstable work history. For example, if you have a large gap on your work history or several smaller gaps, if there are lots of jobs that didn't last very long, if you appear to be a job hopper, this is going to be seen as a red flag by employers. They're going to see you as unstable, as not committed. What can you do about this? Well. It depends on your individual situation. For example, if you have a large gap in your work history, is there anything you can do to cover it up, to fill that gap in? Maybe you didn't have a traditional job, but were you going back to school? Were you self-employed? Did you have a position as volunteer work that you could include on your resume? Were you a caretaker for relatives? These are things that you can include to fill in the gaps for a smaller gap, for a gap that lasts less than a year. What you can do is on your work history, instead of putting the months and the years that you worked at various places, just put the years. That will cover any gaps smaller than one year without any need for filling it in. So something else that might be your situation is you might have some jobs on your resume that were short term, that lasted not very long. If you had a job that was only three months or only six months, 
you may choose not to include that job on your resume at all. A lot of times, very short-term jobs are going to hurt you more than they help you. Employers will be wondering, why didn't that job last very long? Now, if it was a temporary job, a contract job, that's fine. That's not going to hurt you to include that, as long as you specifically say that on your resume so that they understand why it was short-term. Other than that, you may choose to not include short-term jobs. Another example of an unstable work history that we sometimes see is people who are always doing more than one job. Um, I see this a lot in retail especially. We'll see people who are juggling two or three part-time jobs at a time. Bravo for them. Um, I, I envy their energy and stamina, uh, but it does create a problem sometimes when they're going to write their resume, they'll have you know, six jobs for the past three years. That looks unstable. Instead, we recommend to these people, pick one. For the past three years, if you worked during the day for Cox Communications and at night in a local restaurant, pick one of those jobs to include on your resume as the job for the past three years. Which job you pick? Depends on the job you're applying for, whichever one is more relevant. Okay, so now that we've covered red flags, I just have a few more last minute tips for your resume. The first one is never lie on the resume. You want to make absolutely certain that you do not tell a lie. Now it's important to note in resume writing, a lie of omission is not a lie. You can omit information all you want. You can leave things off of your resume. You can leave off education. You can leave off work history. You can leave off if you have a criminal record. You don't have to tell them that on your resume. You choose what information you present. But all of the information you present should be correct. So please, stay honest on your resume. You can bend the truth. You can Make certain that you highlight certain things and downplay certain other things, as we've talked about at length already. But you do not want to say something that they can, will consider an outright lie. One aspect of this most people don't think of is your work history, your dates, need to be accurate. If you have an employment date on your resume that is incorrect, if you say that you left a company in April, but you actually left there in March, that's considered a lie. Now, you just misremembered. It's not your fault. But they're not going to take kindly to it. So before you write your resume, you need to make sure that you know your employment dates. If you don't know, you need to find out. If you can call the company and talk to their HR department and find out that way, fantastic. If not, Talk to the Louisiana Workforce Commission. They have a record of all employment in the state of Louisiana. If your work was outside of the state of Louisiana, you can try the Social Security Office or the IRS. They know everything. You need to find this information out. Because whenever a company runs a background check on you, they're going to find out. And what you say better match what they find. Next tip. Our next tip has to do with age discrimination which is sad and shocking and illegal and incredibly common. We see lots of clients in the Career Center who are skilled and knowledgeable and who have difficulty finding work because of their age. People don't want to give them a chance after a certain age. So what this means on the resume is that if you are over the age of 40, your resume should not advertise that fact. What you want to do is make sure that you do not include your entire work history. For most people, 10 to 15 years of work history is plenty. If you decide to go a little bit further, you want to make sure that you have a good reason to do so. Now, sometimes there are good reasons to do so. If you're applying for a job as an engineer at Boeing and 25 years ago you worked at NASA, you tell them that because it's NASA. But unless you have a really compelling reason to go back farther than 15 years on your resume, we advise not to do it. 
For the same reason, make sure that you do not include your graduation date for your education, for your high school or college or vocational degree, unless it was recent. If you graduated recently, go ahead and put the year. Brag about it. Your information is fresh and up to date. But if you graduated more than 10 years ago, you don't need to advertise that fact. Next tip is about the education section on your resume. This is going to be dealt with differently depending on how long you've been out of school. All of the templates that we've seen so far have been templates for people who are established in their careers, who have a few years of work experience under their belts. For these people, the education is at the very bottom of the resume, and it's a very small section. This is true for most of us. For most people who have a few years of work experience, that work experience is going to be far more important to the employer than your education. They will care more about what you've done recently, so that's what you want to highlight and emphasize. If you are a recent graduate, if you don't really have a lot of work experience under your belt, or if you went back to school and you're a recent graduate in a new field and you don't have a lot of relevant work experience under your belt, in these cases, the education is more important. So if you're a recent grad, we recommend putting the education at the top of the resume. We recommend going into extensive detail on things like your major, your minor, the year you graduated, your extracurricular activities, your internships, your externships, your senior thesis project. All of these things matter if you're fresh out of school. Because when you're fresh out of school, you don't have a lot of work history to talk about. We do have templates on the Career Center website that are specifically designed for new graduates. And they all have the education near the top, and they go into extensive detail. But for the rest of us, put it at the bottom, make it tiny, let go of the detail. And finally, one more tip that's not on here. Objectives. Several years ago, when I was in school, it was standard to include an objective at the top of your resume. That's no longer the case. Um, in fact, lots of hiring managers are starting to see objectives as old-fashioned and unnecessary. An objective focuses on what you want out of the job. A lot of times they don't really care what you want so much as they care what you can do for them. If you enjoyed this seminar, please like this video. If you would like more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us.